This is Echo 3, and let's discuss making an artificial gravity ring. Some players like to make their space stations with spinning crew sections in order to roleplay or to emulate other space stations they have seen in science fiction. In my case, I just wanted to drive a rover around on my space station. Whatever your reason, we're going to discuss how to make them and how to do the math so that you can decide how large you should make your rings and how fast they should rotate. You can use a seismometer to display the g-forces on your space rovers if you want. That's what I did for this first station, and you can see we're getting a lot of g's while we drive really quickly around this ring. The hangar is a little easier place in which to build, so we'll be starting off here. We can form the basis for our station by taking care of the basics. You know, a probe core, some batteries, reaction wheels, large amounts of mass, and some way to generate power. The mass just helps keep the station more stable due to all the torque we'll be putting on this thing. We'll be making a set of counter-rotating rings, but the mass and the reaction wheels will just help with any little inconsistencies. The largest rotors are able to produce a lot of torque, so they are needed to get our fairly heavy rings spinning. We will not need the rotors to spin very fast, so I'm limiting their speed to just 10 RPMs. I'm going to do a little trick here with the cubic struts to get 48-way symmetry. You can see my Secrets of Symmetry video for more details on that. This just lets us have perfectly spaced parts for our rig. Holding shift, we can drag the panels out as far as we need, and we should put some walls on our track to help keep our brave kerbals from flinging away. I've tried this without walls, walls is better. Next, we should space tape everything. The Kraken seems to have a love for these kind of crafts, so we should keep it as secure as possible. Strut the rotor to the walls and the panels to each other. This ring is small enough that we shouldn't have too many issues, but you know, let's keep Bill happy. Make sure you don't strut anything that moves to parts that aren't supposed to be moving. So just strut to the rotor itself. I'm also throwing on a few auto struts for good measure. As far as the math goes, we can look at the engineer's report on the bottom right of the screen and see what the diameter of our ring is. It looks like we're about 11 meters across. We can work with that. So how fast should our ring spin? That depends on how much gravity we want to produce. You can find artificial gravity calculators on the internet, but where's the fun in that? Here's an equation we can work with. Parenthesis, 2 pi times the RPMs divided by 60, parenthesis, squared times our radius equals our force in meters per second per second. Or we can divide that number by 9.81 meters per second per second to get our g-forces. In our case, a radius of 5.5 and, and a spin rate of 10 revolutions per minute will get us about 0.615 g's. That is in between Duna and Leith. If our rover drives fast enough with the rotation of the ring, the driver will experience about one g of force. If the driver were to go the other way and be at the same speed that the ring is rotating, he will be weightless again and kind of start to float off. So we're gonna drive with the ring's rotation and not have problems. So you can use this equation to help you decide how fast to rotate your rings. The real life problem with using gravity rings is that a person, when standing, would experience less g-forces on their head than they would on their feet. Over a long enough period of time, and that depends on the individual, this causes a person to feel nauseous. And really, this depends on the individual quite a bit. They found that uh, certain pilots did all right for days, and other individuals, it wasn't very long at all. Bigger rings can help solve this problem by minimizing the differences in g-forces that a person would experience. I'm no expert in Kerbal biology. Perhaps they do not have these issues and would be perfectly fine. They don't seem to have any problems surviving weightlessness in a tiny capsule for decades. Now, getting this ring into orbit involves using a big rocket and lots more struts. You know how most people play the game. All of the parts I'm using are from the Breaking Ground and Making History DLCs. You could probably make a comparable craft with mods, but for the time being, I've been only using quality of life mods like Kerbal Alarm Clock, Kerbal Engineer, Trajectories, 
and a host of visual mods. I use a program called CCAN to download and install almost all of my mods. There might be a few I installed manually, I'm not really sure. Once an, we get this thing constructed, we will be able to send it up into orbit. I am checking my thrust to weight ratio and trying to get enough engine to get this thing to lift off. Generally I shoot for a thrust to weight ratio around 1.3 we're close enough and we've got enough delta v in this thing we'll be able to get into orbit not much more than that but we'll be able to get into orbit these separatons are just to get the upper stage of our rocket away from our station and we should be fine hopefully this launch goes well again the kraken has liked some of these attempts that i have done and i'm hoping this one goes Okay, so far things look like they're going pretty well. I've had to do a few redesigns while I was making this. What you're seeing, actually, is an attempt that worked. So, uh, this ended up seeing to be a pretty good design and worked well for me. Looks like we're going to get into orbit without any problems. The Rhino engine is a good upper atmosphere, second stage engine. It's really good at pushing this thing the rest of the way. Once we get high enough, we'll just get rid of the fairings and we can get this thing into a nice circular orbit. I think I'm using Astronomer's Visual Pack, might be what you're seeing right now. I've used a variety of visual enhancing mods. I am using Parallax right now. I really love the way it makes the terrain look. Boy, it just, it does a great job. I can kind of hardly wait for Kerbal Space Program 2 with as good as Kerbal Space Program right now looks. All right. We're going to get rid of our upper stage, get this thing spinning, and I'm going to disconnect the rover from the station and then use the RCS to kind of push it against the ring. And that should, once we get set up here, once we get firm, we can start racing around the ring. Because, you know, the best place for Jeb to test out a new rover design is in orbit. Personally, working with gravity rings has been a lot of fun and given me new ideas for things to build in the future. We are transitioning into planting season here, so my free time is getting very limited. This is Echo 3, and thanks for joining me to discuss artificial gravity rings. I will see you next time.